is shaking, y'all. It is episode 57, the Golden Mike Live. We've got a good one for you. We've got a good one for you. Mark Mawinney is here with us today. Um, Mark, how is it in Canada? It's hot, extremely hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I just realized I've seen your name a million times and I've never said it out loud. So I've got to do you, ask you respectfully, did I say your name right? Yeah, you got her, Ma Winnie. Mark, it's like I say Ma, then Winnie the Pooh. That's the easiest way. But I've heard it all. Mick Winnie, Mahiney, Mahoney. God, I've heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> make it like a high, make a hiney ho. Yeah. Um, so for, for those of you who are watching, and I know there's a bunch of y'all, that are entrepreneurs starting your coaching business or you're looking to level up or you're in the middle of your coaching business right now and you're like, this is not what I thought it would be. Or you think you have to stick with certain blueprints in your business. Mark is here to talk about a couple things. Before we even, even go about into that, I want to give you some, some insight into Mark. Um, probably one of the largest um, Facebook followings is this thing called the coaching jungle. If you haven't heard about it, check it out. A lot of cool stuff going on in the, the coaching jungle. Mark is a part is associated with that. He is the coach in the coaching jungle. Um, two podcasts, natural born coaches and the Mark Mawini show. Um, so not one, but two, um, and he's got his. He's got a whole bunch of coaching programs. Uh, I know that you got this really cool thing going on with. It, it's called the Secret Coaches Club, and it's like getting this like uh, newsletter, the secret newsletter every uh, every month or so. And it's like it, it's it's like this super special feeling that it, it's not emailed to you like very you old school. <laughs> yeah, it's old yeah. school. It's old school, and you can highlight it, and you can do all this cool stuff with it. Um, all these cool ways of of improving your lives uh, in terms of coaching and just living your life to the fullest. Cool stuff. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Mark Cordone. I'm the founder of the Make Money Coaching Program. Uh, but more importantly, I am a positive psychology coach. That means two things. Positive psychology means two things. Number one, are you feeling happy on a daily basis? And then number two, are you living your life in full fulfillment when you ask yourself that question. So Mark, when I ask you you those two questions, are you living your life to the full capacity and are you happy on a daily basis? What's your answer? Well, I'll start off just by letting everyone know that, uh, and you and I chatted before we went live, I yeah. can't see you, so, yeah. um, which is a really strange thing. So you could be flipping me the bird. There, there's some tablet uh, going on with BeLive.TV. So it's like a blank screen. So apparently you can see me. That's fine. But you, you could be flipping the bird. You could do whatever. I'm not going to see it. So, uh, which is a little strange. I like to see the other person to see facial reactions and stuff like that. So if I if I seem a little weird here in this interview, that's why I'm looking at a blank a blank screen is Mark. But anyways, um, <laughs> that's I, how I usually look. Anyways, I have a blank yeah. face. No, there you go. Yeah. So um, I guess your question: uh, Am I happy and fulfilled essentially uh, wow. every day? Yeah. yeah, I mean, as much as you can be. I think anyone who says that they're happy twenty four seven is probably full of it, or they're on yeah. some really good drugs. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> So I, overall, uh, I'm a, a positive thinker, but I'm also a realist. I'm not a woo-woo guy, as you could tell, Mark, from yeah. us knowing each other and, and you yeah. follow some of my stuff that uh, I'm more of a meat and potatoes guy. So I'm not the type of guy that's sitting at home uh, shooting out positive vibrations from my behind and manifesting <laughs> stuff. You know, I'm generally being positive, but I'm going out there and, and doing the work to get it. So to answer your question, That's I'm I'm happy, but you know what? You could always be happier, right? <laughs> right. Well, I I actually am posting up a picture of Mark taking a shit of Skittles right now. So yeah. the, the opposite's happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got rainbows when you fart, Mark. Um, no. <laughs> That's not, I love that. And just to follow up with the second piece of things, um, when it comes to positive psychology, people think that positive psychology is 24-7, the craps and giggles. It's Taco Tuesday every day. Mm. Um, and that you never are examining um, sort of the downs of life. And I agree with you, Mark. Like, if you're always up like that, um, you're either a sociopath or you're dead. <laughs> so it's a much different thing when you when you uh, recognize the ups, downs, and all all arounds of your life, or even sort of the um, the idea of the ups, downs, and all arounds of your business. 
because your business is like a living, breathing organism as well that ha- that goes through those cycles as well. Yeah. Um, so um, for those of you watching, if you are feeling the feels right now, if you're like, Mark, I just, uh, the two marks, you know, I was feeling great last week. You know, I could, I would have answered that question. I was feeling happy and feeling fulfilled, but you know what? After the 4th of July, after Canada Day, I thought about my life and thought about the fact that I was doing something for 15 years and I'm out of sync right now. I don't feel fully fulfilled and something's weird. Something needs to change. Yeah, that's cool. That's part of the ups, downs and all all arounds. Um, Give us a thumbs up if you're watching. Let us know that your heart is beating. Your story is just as important as everybody else. um, And and just recognize that what that what's going on with y'all in in your life now. Given all of that, there's the intro. Mark, I want to get right into it. What is your story, man? Because you helped so many other people. What is your story? Uh, in a nutshell, my story is uh, I-, I was in real estate for years. Started back when I was 21 years old. And I came across my first business card recently looking through some old books. I used it as a bookmark. And um, I looked about 15 years old and I looked about 90 pounds. I was like, get this kid a sandwich. So um, (laughs) I'm like, who the heck would have uh, listed their house with me? But anyways, I did well, did that for about a decade. And uh, where I got into coaching, to make a very long story short, is I went through business closure in real estate and I was helped by several coaches and several mentors as well. And that's what first exposed me to coaching. I really didn't know much about coaching all those years through real estate. I'd been approached once, I remember, by someone who was a coach. And I thought, you know, why would I need a coach? Look at how well I'm doing, you know. I'm a cocky 20-something, knows everything, right? And if I had Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I look like uh, (laughs) anyone who's seen the the first Captain America movie before he gets the super soldier serum. (laughs) (laughs) When Chris Evans' face was CGI'd or superimposed on the scrawny kid. That, that was me. I was him when he's trying to go fight for the allies and couldn't get in. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that was what it got me into coaching. And after I realized what coaching was and stuff like that, I knew I wanted to get back into business, but I was burned out from real estate, hadn't been enjoying it for, for a while. And I just said, I want to do something else. I thought, wow, it'd be great to be a coach. And that's where I started my coaching business early 2014. And here we are now. So what was it that you what was it that you saw coaching was? What were some of the eye opening moments from your own personal experience? Well, the first thing, which technically wasn't a coaching session, but it really helped. And, and I think it does tie in what coaches do. Uh, when I went through this messy business closure, August 2009, I uh, I was getting kicked around really bad. I mean, the local newspaper was running front page stories and I had people, strangers attacking me. It was just not a good scene. And uh, I had someone reach out to me who lived about an hour away and his name's Rivers Corbett. And I had no clue who Rivers was. And he said, you know, look, I see what's going on with the media and stuff. I'd love to meet up with you and chat. And I wasn't exactly a social butterfly at this time, right? I was probably thinking, you know, piss off, buddy. I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> I like Rivers. He's a friend now, so I can say that. I don't know if any cursing's allowed on your show or not. So, um, Hey, but- brother, this is – however Mark shows up is however Mark shows oh, okay, up. Okay, good. So I probably felt like saying to this river stranger, fuck off, mind your own business. But hey, anyway, now! Yeah. Every work but that one. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't drop a lot of F-bombs. But I, I, no, so what weird. happened was Rivers um, said, do you want to get together? And I'd love to sit down with you for coffee. And a couple problems. I don't like coffee, which people find weird. I've had about half a cup of coffee in my whole life, which people – find strange and secondly it was a two-hour round trip to drive all the way to Fredericton where he lives which another city but something made me go do that and I thought you know what I'm gonna do it to get out on the road and clear my head and it was just an incredible meeting we sat down and and that one meeting completely shifted my whole mindset because Rivers had been through the entrepreneurial ups and downs He, he had gone through business closures and from talking with him he shared stories of other people who had gone through messy business closures and suddenly I realized hey I'm not alone that it wasn't this scarlet letter with a business closure I'm the only person who's gone uh, through that and that my energy leaving there was completely different completely shifted and I think that's what a good coach does even though that wasn't technically a coaching session 
what he did there really in a lot of ways was the same as what a good coach does. And Rivers actually is a business coach. He does that as well too. So that, that's a story that always I'll always remember. And I consider Rivers a friend, mentor even today. And we're almost a decade later. Right on, right on. Now, uh, it, it sounds like such a, a valent experience for you that you wanted to go into coaching, right? Um, I, I'm, I'm curious because – we log into the coaching jungle. We log into natural born coaches. Um, it seems like you got the system down, man, you know, and um, what were the, what were the early years of your coaching um, journey looking like? Well, the early years was uh, throwing jello at the wall and <laughs> seeing what stopped. Right? <laughs> in all honesty, I'd like to say I had it figured out on day one right out of the gate, but yeah. Um, one of the, uh, I think, strengths I have is I'm not afraid to take action. I'm not a perfectionist, so I'll get out there. Mm -hmm. I'll do stuff. I'll re adjust as needed and change course. So the early days was just getting out there, talking to as many people as possible, and really honing my message. Uh, so it wasn't like it is now. It takes a while to get your message out there, and that's the advantage mm -hmm. of consistent content creation, for example. People say, mm -hmm. oh, do I have to be doing as much content creation as you're doing, Mark? Because I'm doing daily emails, and I've got that print newsletter and tons yeah. of social media posts and stuff. The advantage for doing that is you're going to hone your message, and you're going to improve by leaps and bounds if you're consistently doing it. So the early stages, really, uh, I could say that the podcast, Natural Born Coaches, is what got me on the map. But then what happened was I kept adding other things to it, including the Facebook group, as you mentioned, the coaching jungle. So there's almost yeah. 14,000 people in there now. But the big key, which I'll stress, is I didn't have that all figured out in the early days. I just got started. I didn't try to do too many things at once. And I think that's a mistake a lot of coaches make. New coaches, mm -hmm. when they start coaching, they think, okay, I want to, I'm um, right away, I want to be coaching, I want to be creating online programs, I want to write a book, I want to do a speaking tour, I want to do a, a retreat, I want to do a local event, and, and all this other stuff. Hey, I can actually see the, the script at the bottom doing too many things at once, so I guess I can see one thing here, so if you're telling me off by the typing there, I'll be able to tell. <laughs> Can't see you, but... But, that but was that my is, test, just in case. Yeah, there we go. But but that is a mistake with a lot of coaches, and it's the exact I, the metaphor I use. It's like if you have twenty people trying to get through a door at once, they're not all going to get through that door. It's going to be a big mess. So I always tell coaches focus on one thing at a time, and then keep adding on to it. But don't try to do too many things at once. It's probably not going to work that way. Sure, sure. And and uh, even myself, I, I remember when I started, I was doing, you know, I was writing a book, getting ready for a speaking campaign, mm. uh, all these things. And uh, it really was just focusing in on one thing and 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 doing it really well. Uh, and then and then using that to pivot to the next thing. Yeah. Jim He's Collins has a great quote. He said, if you have more than three priorities, you don't have any. So unfortunately, a lot of coaches have 20, quote, priorities, and then they don't get anything done. Right, right. What are some other mistakes that you're seeing um, new coaches consistently making? Um, there's a perfectionist thing, like I mentioned. I'm mm. shocked at how many are perfectionists. Uh, the very first group call I do with every group coaching um, group that comes through is uh, I ask who here is a perfectionist. And I would mm. estimate – at least two thirds admit that they're perfectionists, but in truth, it's probably a little higher too. So I yeah. say that my goal is to beat that perfectionism out of you. So what's <laughs> happening is new coaches are getting started and coaches are big consumers of personal development stuff, right? They're usually addicted to learning. They read tons yeah. of self-help books. They follow the big names, the thought leaders, the people in the world which is great to a certain extent. The problem there is that they're, I'm hearing a lot of them say, well, I, I can't get out there yet because I have to get my website sucks. I want to get a better website. It, it, I want it to look like Brendan Bouchard's or Tony Robbins or Marie Forleo's stuff. And these are people who've been at it a long time. And my first website was god awful. It was ugly, but it got the job done. Then I revamped it two years after it got started. And you know, I'm always revamping things. But to, that would be a big one there is that perfectionist streak that too many coaches have. Okay. So before we start talking about like, starting a successful business on, on basically like a shoestring budget. I, I am curious, what was your initial message? I, I want to know like the old, like if we were doing like the throwback movie, your, your, 
precursor yeah. movie. What yeah. was that first message? Like, what were you looking at? Well, when I first started, I thought in How's This for General, I said, I want to be a coach for entrepreneurs <laughs> because yeah, um, man. I, love, I love entrepreneurs. I was coming from that background in real estate. I really wanted to help entrepreneurs. So my heart was in the right place. Unfortunately, it was just too broad. And I discovered that in the first year. Now, I worked with some people. I had some bricks and mortar clients and stuff like that. But where I honed down to focus uh, solely on coaches is I had two clients who were coaches and I preferred those sessions much more than others. No offense to the other ones. I mean, they weren't bad people. But the issue I had, um, I didn't have as much fun coaching Joe from Joe's widgets and stuff, the bricks and mortar type thing. I really enjoyed those the coaches I was working with. I enjoyed the, helping them with their message, their marketing, their pricing, and so on. And I finally said, you know what, this is silly. I'm going to focus just on them. Anyone else, and even to this day, anyone who, who approaches me from, say, a bricks, uh, bricks and mortar business, I refer them off to a, a business coach or whoever I know that can help them. So that was it. The, the first year, I remember my first ever lead magnet that I used as an opt-in was five books that every entrepreneur should read. And it was probably the crappiest lead magnet in the history of mankind. It had think and grow rich and how to win friends, influence people in a crappy little paragraph after it took about an hour, but Hey, I got it done again. That goes into that perfectionist thing. I, right. I didn't have to be perfect. It, I got it. Out yeah, there. It doesn't, it, it doesn't sound like uh, Mark, uh, Unless at one point you had the perfectionistic snot beat out of you, it doesn't sound like at this point when in in your journey that uh, perfectionism was something that you were worried about. You were throwing well, no, jello. On the wall. I I went through a business closure with a hundred agents and employees where the shit hit the fan and everything collapsed. So any hope of perfectionism was lost at that time. But. In <laughs> <laughs> I perfected the the messy business closure, I guess. But <laughs> truthfully, I um I had I was never a perfectionist because even in my real estate days, you couldn't be. It was just I was so busy going 120 miles an hour, yeah. just working seven days a week, hundred and God, tons of hours. It was like Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk's work schedule, you know, with how he is and stuff. So I couldn't be a perfectionist, even in the real estate days when I had to write a real estate ad and stuff. And I'm submitting a bunch of listings and things. I couldn't spend an hour or two hours writing a short little real estate snippet. I had to get it out there. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about um, starting a business when when your budget is 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 very lean. Um, what, what, what can you, you tell us about that? Well, uh, when I started where I was coming off a of business closure not that long before, I didn't have the big re the resources that I had in my real estate days. At mm -hmm. the time, that seemed bad, but I actually think that was a good thing. That was a silver lining in there, in that cloud, because what it did is it forced me to make up for the lack of money I could throw into my business with effort and doing stuff organically. So one of the issues I see nowadays is everybody wants to just start and they want to buy a bunch of Facebook ads and, and never have to do anything organically or talk to people. It seems like they just want to you know, <laughs> throw it out there with the ads with their magic funnel, make seven figures and have the money rolling in without talking to anyone. I, I had to do it differently. So I had to say, okay, I, I don't have the resources to throw into the stuff. I'm going to put out good content, engaging content, start conversations with people. And that's how I built my business. And even to this day, although I am, I'm starting to do more Facebook ads as this year progresses, but I've spent very little on ads. It's been primarily organic type stuff. And I'm grateful for the shoestring budget for that reason. So if anyone listening is on a shoestring budget or a dental floss budget, like I say mine was, <laughs> shoestring's a little generous, it was even thinner than that. Uh, if, you, if you don't have the money with it, you can make up for it. But it's, the, the issue is um, when you're going down that path, there's a fork in the road that you usually you have to go with either paid ads or organic stuff, or you can do a combination of both. The problem I'm seeing is a lot of coaches say, well, I don't have money to, to spend on ads, but they're not making up for that and choosing that path with aggressive organic stuff. So they're not choosing anything. They're driving right into a tree right in the middle of the road instead of picking a, a fork in the road there. So that, that would be a big problem I'm seeing coaches right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I'm def um, and tell, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing from, from Mark is, is that um, with no money, you can provide value 
to folks. Yeah. Uh, you can provide value. Now, now let's say someone is sitting here saying, Cordon, Mahoney, that's cool. Um, you know, uh, but if I continue to, to uh, pro, uh, email my list, it's going to tire them out and they're going to jump off my list. They're going to get out of my Facebook group. Mm -hmm. What, what, you know, what, what are your thoughts on someone who would say something like that? They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How so, Mark? I, I spend a lot of time through my week uh, trying to get people onto the daily email bus because I'm a big fan of daily emails. I've been doing them now for two and a half years. And I just ran into this in the Facebook group earlier this week where two different people said, oh, I would unsubscribe if somebody emailed me daily. And what I said is, hey, look, that doesn't mean that it's a bad business strategy. And uh, <sighs> there's so many things I could say about it. We could do a five-hour show about daily <laughs> emails and stuff. If you're giving value to people and you're entertaining, I always say number one rule is don't be boring when it comes to stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving value, you're entertaining them, they will look forward to reading your emails. Uh, you've probably seen my emails, Mark. I pitch in every single email, there's a call to action. Now there's not, it's not a heavy arm twisting call to action. What I do is I give a lesson, tell a story, tell them something that helps them at the, for the body of the email. And then it's a very simple transition. By the way, I go over this in greater detail in my blah, blah, blah program, more details here. And I give the link. So it's not like typical internet marketing speak with the typical corny stuff. So th that's the way that I do it. And, and I try to be entertaining. And I can tell you people look forward to those emails because I had one, well, actually two different day days when A. Weber was messing up and it didn't send the email out the usual time that it does. It was delayed. And I had yeah. emails from people, Mark, why didn't I get your email this morning? Did you unsubscribe me? Did you drop me off the list or whatever? Somebody said, is this a social experiment? Because they're used to seeing my email every <laughs> single morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern is when I send it out. And I said, no, A. Weber's messing up today for whatever reason. But it shows I, I would rather chase people off. If there's a type of person that's got their nose up in the air and they think, oh, daily emails, and it, yeah. it, that's probably not my type of client. Instead, I'm looking for the type of person that says, hey, I'm getting great stuff from this. I want to consume it. I want to learn from it. So I would rather chase those people off. I'd rather have a smaller list of serious people in a good relationship with them with a bunch of free pull and cheap pull that just want everything for free and they get offended when you sell or if you email too much yeah you're you're, you're looking at sort of the quality folks um, yeah versus the, versus the quantity um I, i've definitely um fallen into the trap of being like two thousand people my business must be doing well yeah <laughs> zero clients this, yeah. month, <laughs> this month. i always say you can't pay the bills you, you can't go into the bank and pay the mortgage with your facebook likes you know here you go pocket full of likes and <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes but there there is something really really cool when um when you provide value and then the second piece that i'm hearing mark is you're consistent with providing value you, you, you sometimes, we sometimes forget about the fact that these things become part of da people's daily rituals, these mm -hmm. emails, you know, um, and, and that value goes a long way. Um, they may not be ready to, um, to hire you right now, but then you're the first person that comes to mind when they think about, you know, um, finding a coach's coach, you know, yeah. um, and I think that's I think that's a big deal because I think a, a lot of the other folks, or not a, the the other folks, but I think a lot of other folks think that an email is, well, work with me right now. I'm gonna twist your arm. Now's the time. And that's where it feels a little bit weird to folks. The, the the way most people handle their email list, most coaches, and this I didn't coin this. This Ben Settle actually said this. They treat their list like a booty call. So they only contact them when they, they only contact them when they want to come over Saturday night at midnight or you know Sunday morning at two a.m. Essentially, um, when they want something from their list, all of a sudden they pop their heads out and they're the nicest person in the world and buy my stuff. And that's not the way to do it. So, uh, in my experience, the people who are triggered by being sold to, um, yeah. they're usually. Uh, resentful because they're not selling much and mm. uh, not a connection there. They don't, uh, we're not going to work well together. If it's someone that gets offended that I'm in business, I'm actually trying to make a profit, then I don't want to work with them anyways. Or I would gladly refer them to a hated competitor and say, Hey, you should contact 
so and so. I don't know if you right. I don't know if you can see this, but um we yes. have Ritu Thank over in California. Oh, sorry. Um, saying, I don't know if you can hear this, but we have Ritu over in California. And Ritu, I, I know that you're doing some cool things with, with being a um, productivity expert. Daily ritual, I am in no more booty calls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I can't see the comments, so thank you. Um, all I can see is what you're typing on the screen about booty call. So. Oh, okay. Um, Ritu, Ritu said, fuck off, Mark. <laughs> 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 jokes, jokes, jokes. Um, yeah. so let's let's talk about this. Um, uh, we can we can talk sometimes uh, start our business, and uh, again, in many ways, um, one of the reasons why we can't get to that specificity of of what we do is because we're trying to please everybody. Yes. Yeah. And um, what are your thoughts on sort of that idea of of people pleasing? Oh, boys, I think people pleasing is dangerous. And uh, I've gotten, especially the last few years, more polarizing or more willing to polarize. So when I say that, there's certain people who are on the internet that are trolls that just are, for whatever reason, always polarizing. And I'm not saying that your goal is to make every single person hate you, obviously. But you yeah. shouldn't be afraid of offending some people and putting out a strong opinion. So I put out strong opinions and that's gotten, I say it's gotten me into trouble at times. So it's done me a favor because it's driven some people away that I wouldn't want to work with anyways. So that's your goal in business. If you can get half the people hating you, half the people liking you, you're going to be in better shape than if you try not to offend anybody. Um, case in point, um, hopefully we don't lose anybody here, <laughs> but Donald Trump, um, you never meet anyone who says, uh, when you say, what do you think of Donald Trump where they're on the fence? Like, Oh, I, I don't know. I'm waiting to see what I think of him or whatever. It's either, <laughs> um, he is, uh, the great Satan and he's going to destroy the world. He's horrible. The worst person who's ever lived worse than Hitler, or he's uh, a saint who can walk on water, make an America great again. Thank God for Donald Trump. But there's never anyone in the middle. That works for Donald Trump. He's used polarization perfectly. If you look at all those, uh, the other Republican candidates, you got the, the milk toast, the ones that try to play it in the middle and, and were bland and boring. He steamrolled 16 of them through the primaries to win the nomination because he polarizes with it. So you can actually learn a valuable business lesson from Donald Trump, even if you hate his guts. Sure. Sure. Um, I, I, I definitely know that there's this, uh, this concept that I, I, I put in there and, uh, it's part of the reason I've got red hair, right? Um, because mm. <laughs> people's initials, re initial reactions, uh, okay, this, uh, this guy must stand for something like, and the fact that like my assumption will be that I immediately visually will be turned, will turn people off. They won't want to work with someone who's younger, not everybody, but, some people will just be like, that's not my prototype coach. And mm. so for me, that's where I run with. I'm not your yep. prototype, prototypical coach. I'm cool with that. That's what I stand for. I'm not your prototypical person who's going to give you a blueprint. You know, so if you work mm. with me, you're not going to see that. So from soup yeah. to nuts, from what you see when you first see me to the stories I tell in my emails to the way that I interact with Mawini, it's not, it's not going to be prototypical. Um, yeah. And you know, for somebody who wants, um, you, you know, something that is more, I, I wouldn't call it safe, but a, a different style. Yeah, there's plenty. There's lots of us coaches out there and there's a lot of different styles. So I would rather be someone people could say, I hate Mark. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, rather than be like, Mark, who's that? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I had a chance to read your book. Thank you for sending the advanced copy. And that well, works with your style. You know, you, you've got... Um, a certain style there. I like that you add a lot of stuff about pop culture too, by the way, because that's what I like <laughs> yeah. doing. Um, yeah. People aren't going to hire you as a coach if all you're doing is vomiting out motivational quotes on Facebook all day. Uh, so don't get me wrong, I love motivational quotes, but I see some people like, Mark, I don't know what's going on. I'm posting five, 10 times a day on Facebook and I'm not getting any business. And they're just regurgitating uh, Maya Angelou quotes and Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, <laughs> Grant, Grant Cardone. Um, it, it, yeah, it just, that's all they're doing. And people can Google for motivational quotes and get yeah. 2 trillion results in half a second. So they're not going to hire you just because you're posting images of a kitten hanging on the clothesline saying, <laughs> hang in, you know. <laughs> 
I, I would much rather hear somebody's uh, honest message point of view and put themselves out there to, to see that kitten, right? <laughs> when I see that kitten dangling on a rope and it says shit happens, I want to pay 8,000 bucks for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Well, the funniest one I see, I see some coaches that take some, a famous person's motivational quote and they put it out there without attributing it to that person. Oh, yes. So the other day I see a, see a coach, a female coach puts out there, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve. Okay. Um, <laughs> then maybe she didn't read that. It was just some weird coincidence, but I think she probably read that. Um, yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, there was the word, and yeah. God said it was good. Mark Cordell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, one thing I've started doing, Mark, is I started doing a question of the day every day, and I usually post it in around noon hour Eastern time on my personal in, Facebook. In your group. Oh, on your personal uh, actually Facebook. Actually, on my personal Facebook, yeah. And the question is, it's not always necessarily business related, but I want to get people thinking. I want to challenge them. So, I mean, yesterday's one was uh, if you could have dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would it be, you know, for example? I'm um, curious, what, what, like, what was the diaspora of people that showed up that, that, that um, answered? What were they answering with? Yeah. Let me, well, there's a lot of Jesus. Um, there was uh, <laughs> Donald Trump, who thinks he's God. <laughs> so <laughs> a few people said Trump. Um, I, I had said Elvis uh, was who I was leaning towards. I thought the king, <laughs> the king would be cool. There were a lot of people that made the joke where when I said dead or alive, um, they would make the joke, well, I'd rather eat with an alive person. A dead person would be awkward or it would smell. Boom, or boom. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, some really interesting ones. But some of the other questions I asked, I asked um, some of them are business related, but some of them are just for fun, too. So the other day I asked, uh, oh, what was it? Um, what was the worst pickup line you've ever heard, uh, for example? And, and yeah. I put in there, if you're easily offended, skip this post, because I, I knew there'd be some people like Reverend Lovejoy's wife on The Simpsons that would pop into this <laughs> and read it and get all offended. It would ruin their day or whatever. I asked uh, one of them, would you rather be on Survivor or Big Brother? So I'm, I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. It's good to, for the engagement. Uh, speaking from a purely greedy capitalist, uh, it's good because Facebook looks and says, hey, uh, Mark or you know whoever, J Joe or Mary are commenting on Mark Mooney's stuff. We're going to show them more of his stuff. So speaking mm -hmm. as, like I said, a greedy capitalist, it's good that way. But it's also fun. It, it gets you actually engaging. It makes social media social instead of just always broadcasting to people, too. So it's kind of a cool thing. You don't have to do question of the day. You could do um, uh, Ben Perry. Uh, ben Perry does a daily thought bomb. Uh, I know some people do a word of the day. How does this word mm -hmm. apply to you? What do you think of this word? So I, I think oh, things like that are good for consistency. Well, I, I love the idea of the it's it's mild provocation you know to, to just get somebody to disrupt their pattern right and and i also love the, um that it's a, a rapport builder right because uh, i'm sure people would be like oh i'm i'm seeing uh, mark constantly on his his show oftentimes a a podcast is is a, a singular one directional communication and now here's a new platform in which i can communicate back and forth with, forth with mark people so love the answer questions right if you yeah. said coke or pepsi people will feel like they want to jump in coke, uh, coke. with that i'm a pepsi coke. guy but i have i, I cut <laughs> out and with that said this is the end of the count no i'm just today's kidding. show is sponsored by gatorade um oh. <laughs> since it's 100 degrees here in canada but um yeah, people love to answer questions. Now, I will say with questions, that can't be your primary build, business building. So I have seen okay. some coaches that ask um, silly questions. That's all they do. They don't put anything out that helps their business. So they'll say, if you were a flower, what kind of flower would you be? Or who would win in a fight, He-Man or Hulk Hogan and stuff like that? Uh, you can't just do that. Um, you've seen my stuff. I believe that you got to tie in stuff with business, but it's good to mix it up a little bit so it's not all the same stuff. And it's very cool. It's very cool the way that you do it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll see this post and it's like, uh, it's like Super Mario getting a flower, right? And powering up. And then I'm just like kind of being taken back to the days of playing that game. And you'll be able to relate that to a, a concept that's very applicable to my business. Um, and so it's, it's, it's engaging and it's an entertaining, yeah. uh, 
Well, full that's, disclosure I, I, on that one, that's a, a meme or a picture that's out there. So that one's something I stumbled across and I kind of expanded on it with my thoughts. But um, I posted one the other day, your, your comic book uh, or superhero fan too, I think, uh, on the, about The Incredibles 2. I took my little guy to go see it. I turned it into a business lesson. In a nutshell, The Incredibles, they waited 14 years to do the sequel. They left billions of dollars on the table in 14 years because there was a desire for more of those movies, which yeah. we've seen from Marvel and others. They could have built a whole universe around The Incredibles, and they wait 14 years uh, to do another movie. Uh, so it, it, that my point with that goes to what we were just talking about is you got to stay in front of people. Don't wait 14 years <laughs> between when you're – putting stuff in there. I want to stay in front of people daily. I want them to not be able to turn around without seeing Mark Mawinney. I want to haunt them when they close their eyes at night and they go to sleep. <laughs> they, they picture me standing above their bed, bed breathing on them, though. Uh, not that creepy. <laughs> And the, approach, <laughs> the, the approach I take, uh, it's a lot like a casino. So, you know, in the casino, yeah. when you win and you go collect your winnings in the back corner, to get out of that casino, they make it as difficult as possible to get from that cage with your winnings to the outer world. You're trying to veer. There's not a straight line. They've got slot machines going in all sorts of angles to block you. Uh, they've got it's bells true. and whistles and everything else going on because they want you to walk by the um, the Betty White slot machine. That's actually a slot <laughs> machine, which I've played. Uh, I, I got sucked into Betty White before. That sounded bad. <laughs> sucked into Betty White. Um, oh, I was saying for older women, though. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. <laughs> but they want you to put your money into the Betty White or the uh, the Walking Dead or whatever, the yeah. Big Bang Theory slot machine before you get out into, um, into the outside world. And that's how I want my content to be. I want people... To, they open up Facebook, they're seeing my stuff. They're opening up my email, they're seeing Mark Morty. They're opening up Twitter, oh, there's Mark again. LinkedIn, Instagram, although I'm not a huge Instagram guy, but I am on there. I want them to constantly be seeing me in all these places, just like they can't escape from the casino, they can't escape from me. But I'm doing it for their own good because I know I can help them. So if I can't sell them, I can't help them. That is, um, that is such an awesome metaphor uh, in terms of, um, what, uh, you know, sort of how, how, how we can really stay in the forefront of our potential clients, mm. um, minds. um, stay in the front of minds. There will be a time, there will be a time. There's a, there's a reason why they're engaging with your stuff because it's probably hitting home, but now's not the right time. And yeah, then there exactly. usually is that time. A uh, Rebecca Weintraub says dream team right here. That's right. The two marks, the two hey, marks. Show. Um, so I wanted to throw this out there now. Here's another thing that uh, we coaches deal with. When is that time to increase your fees? Or what is it, um, uh, the idea of charging what you're worth? Um, what would you have to say ab about that? Well, I, every six months I increase my fees. So that that's me and I force myself to do it. And that's always a little bit scary because you get comfortable where you're filling your other spots at the old rate. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're thinking, oh, gee, do I want it? Is that too aggressive? Do I want to increase it? But uh, most coaches, when they get started, are far too low. They're doing free coaching or discounted coaching. Mm -hmm. And they use the the excuse or their little voices telling them, well, I'll do this for a while to get experience, to become a better coach, to get referrals, to get testimonials. Unfortunately, what happens is they get stuck in that mentality for so long that it's hurting their confidence and it makes it even harder to start charging mm -hmm. what they're supposed to be charging. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I've made no secret. I'm not a fan of the free two hour coaching session, right? Which yeah. some people espouse uh, with it. I just, I don't think that's good. I mean, I do a call with someone for max 30 minutes uh, to see if it's a fit to work together. They're going to get some help from me on there, but I'm not giving yeah. them everything with that. And uh, that would be my suggestion for new coaches is to cut down. Don't do the marathon free sessions. You're going to burn yourself out and you should also charge higher, whatever you think of charging, you're probably going to have to add a zero onto it or at least wow. the, a couple times more. So don't, I mean, I could get into a whole bunch of things. Don't get into um, single sessions. I'm not a fan of uh, working with someone for just a couple weeks or a month, you know, minimum package, three months, six months, a year, but don't get into the single stuff. It's going to take too long and too many hours to try to fill all those spots. You're going to be selling all the time. 
Okay. Do you usually have a percentage of, uh, or, or uh, you know, this is the amount of time I want to be coaching in the coaching space, and this is the amount of time that I want to be, uh, you know, marketing, selling, you know, getting into those discovery calls, or is it more of like a nu- numeric figure that you have, and just I want to raise that. No, my, that my goal is takes. A, a maximum five one-on-one clients at a time. I don't want to be working with 20 people charging them peanuts. So I'll have five one-on-one clients, and then I'll generally have one group coach, uh, group coaching program going at a time. Actually, the majority of my time isn't spent coaching. It's spent on my other stuff. So that's what a lot of new coaches don't realize. They think they're going to be spending 80 90% of their time coaching and then 10%, uh, a little marketing, a little bit of paperwork, <laughs> stuff like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be flipped with it. Yeah. But um, it, what's better now, and this is the advantage for con- good content creation and consistent content creation, is I'm not really chasing people. The people come to me are – for the most part, pre-sold. They've been following my stuff sometimes for a couple of years. They know me, they know, like, and trust me. They're in the group or they're listening to the podcast or so on. I'm not having to chase them and and jump them down, uh, jump on top of them to nail them down. So it's like, uh, have you, you, have you seen uh, the cable guy with Jim Carrey? Of course I've seen it. That's a very underrated movie. They got, he got (laughs) flack for that. I love the cable guy. I thought it was a great movie, but do you remember when uh, Matthew Broderick gets home and there's like 20 messages on the uh, answering machine where he's like, you know, like, Hey, I I just uh, thought, thought you might've called us in the shower. Give me a call. Uh, Hey, (laughs) I was having a leak. Thought I heard the phone. Give me a call. It's like, Holy Jesus. That's what a lot of coaches are like. If they're following up every day with a potential, with a prospect, I don't want to chase people around because if you have to chase somebody, twist their arm and do a hard sell, they're probably they probably don't want it. I mean, in reality, you just you sold them on it, but it's not going to be a good working relationship. I think it's right. much better to put your message out there. It speaks to your ideal clients, and then they're going to come to you. But it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take consistent content creation and effort to do it, but it will happen. Sure, absolutely. Um, one of the ways that I. I- uh, I reframed it or, or rethought about it was, uh, you know, at first I thought I needed to be a bull and, and, and just kind of accumulate, you know, like, like Spain, I'd need to conquer territories. Right. Um, and, and it was a much more calming thing to realize how many billion people there are in the world. And if I spend a little bit more time, um, talking about what it is that I stand for and what it is that, um, uh, or who it is that ideally want I want to work with. I have an ideal client. His name is Andrew, and I speak to him. That you know that helps me get over my social anxiety. I know Andrew. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? And um, uh, it, it's such a calming feeling to know that there's people that are searching for a Mark Mawinney. There's people searching for a Mark Cordone, Ritu Gosal. Goswami, Rebecca Weintraub, those people searching for your type. It's just a matter of getting it out there to them and letting them yeah. know that you exist. It's a good way to flip it. So you, if it's supply and demand, there's only one Mark Car- Cardone in the world, or sorry, Cordone. Right. Not, we're talking about Grant Cardone, so I'm thinking Grant Cardone. Uh, there's only no, one. No, Mark I'm, I'm, like, I'm said like Grant Qu- Cordone, but uh, I, I 11X people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there is only one Mark Cordone that's out Only there. one. And there's 7 billion plus people in the world. I think roughly 3.5 billion are on the internet, uh, which (laughs) is a pretty good number. So if you, you could have a really good coaching business with 10 clients. If you have a handful of one-on-ones, you run one group. If you can't get 10 people out of 3.5 billion people who are online, there's something going on there uh, with it. So flip it around, like you said, and look at it that way. Hey, they're, they're getting something from me. Um, They're, they're not doing me a favor by hiring me. I'm, I'm doing them a favor, so to speak. Okay. So, so Mark, you've talked a a good amount now about um, where we've come from, where you've come from uh, in terms of your own story, in terms of where you are as a coach. What do you think the future of coaching is looking like? I think right now we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. So it seems like we're in a little bit of a bubble here, all of us watching this. We're in the coaching world. We're online. So we yeah. think everybody knows about coaches, right? Because that's what we're seeing. Out in the, quote, real world, when I talk to people at a barbecue or something locally, and they say, what are you doing? And I say, I'm a coach. They're like, oh, what sport? You know? <laughs> <laughs> are you a basketball coach or something like that? I'm like, no. Um, so what I think is going to happen, I don't think it's just wishful thinking, but I think there will be a time down the road, not too far down the road, that it's commonplace for people to hire a coach. 
and it's just going to be seen as a normal accepted type thing just like people currently get massages or get their hair done or take their car to get the oil change or whatever and we're not there yet although it feels like that from us being in the online world but i i see in another 10 years it's going to be huge like it's really just starting to blow up now Right on, right on. Because I think a lot of people can be looking at the the now saying, it seems as if there's more coaches than clients in the world yeah. right now. Yeah, but it, it, it does feel as if there's a shift going on. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I long for the day when I won't have to bring in um, a whiteboard with me to a family function to <laughs> what I do. Because when I try it, when I'm talking to aunts, cousins, and stuff like that, I'm just giving up. I'm gonna just start saying I deal drugs. You know, that's how I pay for everything. I'm a drug dealer. You know, I just say I coach a basketball team. When they say what sport, yeah. I'm like basketball. Can I have yeah. the hot dog, please? What I should do on my website is have a separate page for what I do like that, where I speak as if a five year old could understand it, and get cards printed up and when I'm on a family uh, at a family function or a first date or whatever, I just give them the cards and they say, what do you do? And I just say, here you go. And then say nothing yeah. else. It would save me hours and a lot of headache because it, it is funny. I need to bring in uh, the whiteboard. It's going to look like uh, uh, John Nash, a beautiful mind. Remember that uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> movie with, uh, Russell Crowe, yeah. um, that, that's what it looks like by the end of it. It's nighttime, everyone's left the barbecue and I'm still trying to walk through it, you know? <laughs> but actually there's a there's an important lesson there. I always talk about a barbecue pitch and all kidding aside, I, I do have, yeah. when I say barbecue pitch, that's what a coach should have when someone says, so what do you do, Mark? Or what do you do, Rebecca? And my barbecue pitch in a nutshell, I help coaches get more clients without paid advertising. So when I'm speaking to my target market, that's what I'm saying. It's very easy to talk to coaches and get them to explain it as opposed to my aunt, Christine or Donna, who don't know what coaching is, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's the big thing too, is, is if you can get the five-year-old to understand it, um, you can get your aunt uh, or, or for me, my aunt who English is not their first language, right? Oh, okay. so, yeah. Be able to understand what it is that I do on that kind of uh, core singular level, then that means they become a champion for me. Mm. And so when they when they meet that ideal client, they can say, that Mark Cordone, Mark Mawinney does exactly what you're looking for. Mm. Uh, so I do think that it's interesting. And I did see the barbecue pit example used in one of your newsletters. Yeah. So it's good to see it coming up. I Again. like it better than that because people hear elevator pitch. Elevator pitch yeah. has more of a corporate type feel or something like Shark Tank, right? Uh, with yeah. a barbecue pitch should be one sentence, two sentences max. It yeah. should give people an idea of what you do and invites them to ask more questions. It shouldn't be mm. right now. A lot of coaches, if I bumped into them at the barbecue and I said, what do you do? It would be either a blank stare or it'd be a 20 minute speech, right? Right. Yep. Uh, with it, like Mr. Smith goes to Washington, the filibuster scene or whatever, where they're talking for <laughs> so long, I just leave. Um, a perfect example, my friend Asa Laveau, is, um, he had a barbecue pitch, which I thought was great. His barbecue pitch was, I help people make their first $10,000 online. So he's not just saying, I help people make more money, or I help people make money online. It's I help people make their first $10,000 online, which is clear that he's targeting new people and newbies yeah. in the internet marketing space. I thought that was a great example of a barbecue pitch or like not, you know, I'm biased, but my barbecue pitch gets a point across. It's not just, I used to have a boring barbecue pitch. I used to say, I help coaches grow successful businesses. It's like, ugh, you know, real bo boring. When I say I help coaches get more clients without paid advertising, then the coach say, oh, that's interesting. Without paid advertising, don't you need yeah. to do go Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever? I'm like, no, you don't have to. And here's why. And then we can start talking. Yeah, uh, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So I, I'm, I'm totally fascinated by your uh your movie for references and you can't see it but uh rebecca is saying the same thing i gotta ask you this hmm. top movie of all time and how it relates to coaching ah oh, boys that's a tough one top movie of all not my favorite movie just a top movie of all time your top your your top movie of all time yeah 
<clears throat> that my go-to usually is Empire Strikes Back, which is the best Star Wars movie. Um, <laughs> slightly better than the Phantom Menace and stuff. Um, so Empire Strikes Back, I could turn that into a business lesson and say that our uh, coaches are a lot like that um, ragtag group of rebels who are trying to um, make the galaxy a better place in our or our world a better place and we're going against the dark forces which in our world the dark forces would be procrastination negative thinking people thinking that they can't do what they want to do and so on so that's our villain our darth vader our emperor and we're the good guys flying around on the snow speeders and stuff like that from the empire strikes back one of my other favorite movies is dumb and dumber and i'm sure that i could tie that into i could tie that into internet marketing with some of the people i see online but we won't get into that <laughs> ma ding <laughs> sorry yeah. the that Bird. song just came in <laughs> yeah so mawinnie you've said enough for this episode you have said enough. I feel like I could talk to you for hours. I knew that if we were to connect, I'd be fascinated with the things that you had to say and at the same time entertained. I hope those of you who are watching feel the same way. Rebecca, Ritu, um, y'all are enjoying it. For those of you who are watching the replay, I want you to love Mark, share him out. Um, send this to, to the folks, the the coaches, the um, the folks in, in the entrepreneurial space who you feel like could benefit from this, or just want a good laugh hearing Mark um, make these metaphors about barbecues and movies. It's awesome. Now, Mark, I've got a, a link that I'm posting up right now on the real ABCs of a successful coaching business. What are we gonna? Th that's pretty straightforward, but I'm posting the link right now. Anything? we're going to, uh, that shocking or, or different that we're, we're going to find in that, or is well, it like it, your top five books? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and I'm not sure if the full link went on cause I know B live limits it. It's at yeah. natural, natural born coaches.com. You can get the book. Essentially it's an ebook where I, um, did the very uh, original idea. No one else has ever done this. I took every letter of the alphabet and uh, put a point for everyone. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know other people have done it, but I'm not aware of it for coaches. So uh, so we got A, B, C, D, and so on. And it was actually a challenge. I had to cheat a little bit for X. It's very difficult to come up with a word that starts with X um, with it. But it, what I put in there was basically what I wish I'd known starting out coaching. I just took the filter off shared it and it really wrap it, it it wraps up my whole philosophy around building a successful coaching business so that's a book in a nutshell it's a quick read it's you could read it in 10 under 10 minutes probably but you yeah. can get i think a lot of good stuff from there so naturalborncoaches.com mark i'm hoping that we get to have you on the show in the future man this has been a pleasure and and thank wow. you for taking your time out man um this is why it's called well, yeah. say what I worked out well despite that tech issue where I can't see you. So you're probably like, well, now, Mark, I might as well tell you I've been naked the whole hour. And oh, uh, totally. Totally <laughs> naked, bro. Totally naked. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I got uh, – and then I got all those filters with, like, yeah. bunnies and stuff <laughs> hopping around you, right? Um, no, so this is why it's called the golden mic. Um, I, I want you to imagine right now um, that a golden mic is, is uh, descending from your ceiling. It's coming to a stop uh, in front of you, Mark. And for two minutes, uh, the golden mic translates into every language all across the world. So the world is listening. And when I flip the switch, you're on the golden mic live. Mm. So Mark Mawinney, your golden mic starts now. Boys, for two minutes, <laughs> I wouldn't even or less. You know what I would want to tell people, which I think the world really needs to hear. There's an acronym that. I think should be tattooed on everyone's body, or at least they should remember it. It's KMF from a Robin Sharma book, and it stands for keep moving forward. And whether you're a coach, you're an entrepreneur, or even living life on this big ball floating through space, bad stuff's going to happen. It's impossible to float through life and not have challenges, right? So I would say you have to remember KMF, keep moving forward. And sounds cliche you're actually going to learn more from those times of struggle than you probably are the good times i look at the times i went through with my messy failures and everything else i learned more there than all the successful years 
put together. So KMF, keep moving forward. There you have it. I know you can't see me right now, but I want, I'm giving you a fist bump. Ah, cool. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Uh, he, he literally does not want to interact with interface with the camera. He doesn't trust me at all. Um, mm -hmm. Mark Mawini, you've said it all. This is Golden Mike 57. Um, we'll be back next week. I, uh, I'm going to be shutting down the Golden Mike for the weekend, spend some time with the family. I hope you get to make some decisions where uh, you, if you're doing social media, do social media for social good. Um, if you're away from the computer, spend time with the people that you love. Go, go catch a movie. Have a good one. We'll be back next week like we always are. Uh, final question for you. If you're feeling great and you're functioning in your, your full purpose, what is your responsibility to the greater good? My name is Mark Cordone. This is Mark Mawinney. Peace out. Thanks. All right.